This is a video I've wanted to do for a while now, because for one, it's a topic that I'm interested in, and also because there's so many misconceptions about it. The genetic origins of the Jews. And before we get too ahead of ourselves, we're going to have to define what exactly a Jew is, and what it means to be Jewish. I feel like this is where a lot of people get confused. Are Jews a race? Are they a religion? Are they just white people that like to celebrate Hanukkah instead of Christmas? Well, to put it simply, Judaism is an ethnic religion, meaning that its adherents are largely a part of the various Jewish ethnic groups around the world. Rabbinical Judaism is the mainstream variety of Judaism that is practiced today. It arose during the writing of the Talmud, although its roots can be traced back to the Pharisaic movement of the Second Temple period in Judea. The reason why it's called Rabbinical Judaism is because the clergymen are rabbis. In antiquity, rabbis would have simply been scholars of the Torah law and would have been teachers, lawyers, and intellectuals, while the Levitical priesthood would have been the main religious authority that made sacrifices to God at the temple. After the destruction of the Second Temple by the Romans in 70 AD, the more law-oriented rabbis influenced by the Pharisaic tradition were the ones to carry on Judaism. They replaced the Levitical priesthood and traded in the temple for the synagogue. A synagogue is more of a place of meeting, worship, and study rather than a fancy temple with an altar where you give sacrifices. Exactly how, when, and why the Jews dispersed all around the world remains unconfirmed, and all we can do is speculate. Lots of people will either point to the fall of the Northern Kingdom of Israel, or the destruction of the Second Temple and sacking of Judea by the Romans as the main vectors of dispersal. So now that we know a little bit about the religion of Judaism, what are the genetic origins for the Jewish ethnicity? To put it simply, all of the Jews around the world trace their origins to the Levant or Canaan. I guess a good place to start would be the Epipaleolithic Levantine population known as the Natufians. What makes the Natufians special is that they made permanent or semi-permanent settlements before the advent of farming, which supports the idea that agriculture developed because of sedentary populations and not the other way around. Natufian genetics carried over into the Neolithic Levant and spread outwards into other regions, which is why Middle Eastern and North African groups have a lot of indirect Natufian admixture. Even the Anatolian Neolithic farmers are thought to have had around 14% of this admixture indirectly. If this is the case, that means every European has a small amount of indirect Natufian ancestry, which is quite interesting. The Levant Neolithic ancestral component carried over to the Bronze Age Levant, along with more admixture from Anatolian Neolithic farmers, Neolithic Iranians, and Caucasians. These would be the Canaanites, using the broadest definition of that term, and this is where modern Levantine people like the Lebanese and Samaritans get most of their ancestry from today, with extra European and Iranian admixture coinciding with multiple instances of migration and conquest in the region. As we can see, these ancient Canaanites are closest to the Samaritans, Lebanese, Palestinians, Near Eastern Jewish groups, Jordanians, etc. Make no mistake, Jews all around the world also have Levantine admixture going back to prehistory, just like the Levantines today do. But Due to the aforementioned dispersal of them, their story is a lot more complicated due to mixing with local groups where they settled. To get a good idea of who they mixed with and where, I've made G25 models for them. For the sake of this video, I just made models for European Jews because I feel like they're more relevant to the point I want to make, but I intend on revisiting other specific Jewish groups in the future, such as Beta Israel. Keep in mind, G25 and PCAs in general aren't going to be perfect, but they can give us a good idea. European Jews seem to be mixed. The Italian Jews, or Italkin, have been living in Italy since ancient Rome, and they have more Levantine and North African-derived ancestry than local non-Jewish Italians would have. Romaniot Jews, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, are East Mediterranean Jews in places like Greece, Turkey, and Cyprus that likely stretch back to the times of the Byzantine Empire. They have a pretty similar genetic makeup to the Italkim, but with more Levantine-derived ancestry. Then we have the Sephardim, who are typically from Spain but have since moved all around the world. They tend to have more European admixture than other Mediterranean Jews. And finally, we have the Ashkenazim, which are Jews that have historically lived in Eastern and Central Europe. As we can see, they probably have the most European admixture out of all Jewish groups on average, yet still have a significant amount of Near Eastern admixture. The Eastern European Ashkenazim tend to have slight amounts of East Asian-derived ancestry, which isn't surprising because some Eastern European groups do as well. A 2014 study 
showed that the Ashkenazi Jews had a recent population bottleneck in the late Middle Ages of only 350 people. This resulted in something similar to the founder effect, where there's less genetic variability and more genetic drift, making the Ashkenazim more of a distinct population. A 2017 study found that European ancestry in Ashkenazi Jews likely came from multiple major admixture events, one before the bottleneck event in Southern Europe, and more after the event, likely in Eastern Europe. In fact, 60 to 80 percent of European ancestry in Ashkenazi Jews likely comes from Southern Europe, which is surprising because they have historically resided in Eastern Europe, like I said earlier. And real quick, I'd just like to bring up some PCA plots to demonstrate where European Jews plot in relation to other groups. Here's one from a study that I've shown in my previous video about Southern European genetics. As we can see, Ashkenazi Jews are very similar to Sicilians and are in between Europeans and Near Easterners, which is not surprising considering that they have admixture from both populations. I'd also like to take a moment to comment on the idea that Ashkenazi Jews are the descendants of the Khazars. Now to add some background, the Khazars were a Turkic tribe that founded the Khazar Khaganate which sat where Ukraine and southwestern Russia is today. In the 10th and 11th century, some dubious and conflicting Khazarian letters and Jewish philosophical texts claimed that a king of Khazaria converted to Judaism. Now, some people really ran with this idea and sort of invented the idea that uh, you know, the Ashkenazi Jews today are all descended from Khazar converts and actually don't come from the Levant at all. While some variation of the Khazar origin hypothesis for Ashkenazim has existed in the Jewish community since the 1800s, the main form of this Khazar hypothesis today was expounded by Arthur Kessler, a Jewish author and former member of the German Communist Party. In his 1976 book, The Thirteenth Tribe, Kessler posits that Ashkenazi Jews don't come from a mixture of Middle Easterners and Europeans, but rather they are the descendants of Khazar converts to Judaism. Of course, none of this makes sense, considering that it's based on the idea that a Khazar king may have converted to Judaism according to some dubious letters. But nonetheless, this theory still prevails today in some circles. Now, we know that there are some Jewish groups who have mixed in with Turkic groups and speak Turkic languages, such as the Krimchak Jews of Crimea, which has a large Tatar population. But this, of course, doesn't even mean that they come from Khazars or that they're converts or, or whatever. It just means that they mix in with the local populations. What's interesting is that the Khazar hypothesis was pioneered by Jewish figures, but most groups that believe in it today are black nationalists and white nationalists. Either way, no recent peer-reviewed studies has found Ashkenazim to be of Turkic descent, and as we saw in my G25 models, they have minimal East Asian ancestry, and in one population, the German one, they had no East Asian ancestry at all. In conclusion, European Jews could either be considered mixed race or their own race entirely. They have significant amounts of both European and Levantine-derived admixture, and Ashkenazim specifically have a unique genetic past due to extreme population bottlenecks. So yes, Judaism is a religion, but it belongs to a specific ethnic group, or rather a collection of ethnic groups, with their own genetic characteristics. The origins of European Jews can be traced back to the ancient Canaanites in the Levant, and there's no evidence to support fringe claims such as the Khazar hypothesis or any non-Levantine origin hypothesis for Jews. Anyways, that's all I needed to say. I hope you learned something. See you guys in the next video.